Hi, my name is Jay Oza. I teach, mentor, and coach people on public speaking so that they can give winning speeches. Whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, in a job interview, or in a business meeting, in front of a small group, or at a conference in front of a large audience. Today I want to talk about decision making. Specifically, if you are an executive and you have to make a decision. How do you go about making a good decision? I mean, let's face it. If you're a CEO, you're there for one reason. You have the judgment, the temperament, and the intellect to make a good decision. But we are all humans and we have biases. So how do you eliminate the biases as best as you can. I'm going to give you a technique that John F. Kennedy used, but I modified it a little bit. John F. Kennedy, when he took office, made a real blunder when it came to the Bay of Pigs. He, the mission was already underway, kind of got into a situation where he took advice from uh, senior people but he really didn't do any kind of deep dive and as a result it turned into a disaster as we all know so he learned from that and that was one of the thing uh, outstanding characteristic of John Kennedy he was a fast learner when the Cuban Missile Crisis happened he actually had different teams coming up with options and then he chose the option that he eventually went with. Okay, so that was how John F. Kennedy did it. But if you're an executive, how would you do it? Here's what I would do. Assemble at minimum, probably this would be a good number, three teams. Whoever wants to be in team A, team B, and team C. Identify the problem, let them come up with the solution, and you have to choose it, right? So you've given them the information that they need. All the teams in a room got the information. They know exactly what they have to do. Then they disappear, and then they come up with their solution. Now, you will not know who came up with what. Somebody else is going to then jumble it up in a way. You're just gonna get maybe called the blue team, somebody's going to then create you know, teams. Blue team, red team, and green team. You don't know who's in each team. You're just going to look at their solution. Based on that, you're going to come up with your own solution based on their recommendation. And that will be your solution. So now you've got team, you know, blue team, red team, green team solution. And now you've come up with your solution. Let's say you're the white team. Okay, so that's your solution. Then you now have to go and present it to all three teams on why you selected your solution. But that's not the end of it. So now they've had a chance on what you have come up with because they've also looked into this in detail just like you have. So let me just summarize where we are. So these three teams have looked at the problem, they've offered their solution, <clears throat> you've looked at it without knowing who is on what team, because otherwise that uh, interjects biases, and you have now said, okay, I got this, but this is what I think that I want to go with. So that's your solution. Now you present it to all of them in a room, so they know exactly what decision you have made. But that's not the final decision yet. There should be one final check, and that is that each team should have an option to change your mind about certain things individually. So the blue team, now you know who they are, they will come and say, hey, but this is something you should change here. The, the green team would do the same, the red team would do the same, and after that, one last go around, you now are ready to make your final decision and that's it. So you see what has happened here. You assign three teams, 
They came back with the solution, but you don't know what they are, so no bias is there. You came up with, the, based on their solution, your solution that you've taken from, you know, you could have come up with something <clears throat> original or you could have taken some things from one team, another team, and that created your solution. Then you had to go and present it so that they had an I, up, they, they could understand how you came to make the decision. And that's a very important step. A lot of times that doesn't happen. And still they now have an option or one last uh, chance to convince you what needs to change. And after that, you are now ready to make your final decision. This has now gone back and forth, but that's where it ends. This cannot continually keep going back and forth. So I think this is how I would recommend executives make a decision, a big decision, so that not only you get the input from others, but you also get to explain to them, and they get one last chance to convince you what needs to change, and then you are there to end the process and make that final decision. It is your decision, but now you can't do anything more than that. And I think if you as an executive do it this way, you'll make a very good decision. And at least this way you can say, look, I had, I took all the input, I used my knowledge, my insight, my experience, and then I also got others to convince me otherwise. I took their uh, input again, and I finally made the final decision to go with. And I think if you do that, most likely you'll make a good decision, but even if you don't, you can say, I did everything I could to come to that decision. So let me know what you think about this and thank you for watching and good luck with any time you have to make an important decision.